Mastering color is more than just understanding color relationships. It has everything to do with intentional practice and playful and curious experimentation. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly what to practice and how much. Phase one in this four-step process is to understand color relationships. The best way to really understand how colors mix together and how you can create color schemes is to physically make your own color wheel. Doing so allows you to see how your primary colors that you are using interact with white and black and how the primary colors then combine to create secondary colors. Once you have your primary and secondary colors on your chart, you get to explore those more nuanced colors, your tertiary colors, and you can see how everything behaves as you mix them with your own personal physical materials. This is a physical tool that actually represents the colors that you are using and your own materials. When you purchase a color wheel from the store, you are locked in to the digital pigments that are on that particular tool. And although these can be really helpful, they're not a one-to-one -one correlate of your own materials. Your assignment for phase one is to create your own color wheel. And I want this to be as easy for you as possible. So I have a free lesson and resource available for you. At the end of this video, go check out my online course, The Color Lab, and there waiting for you is a free lesson and template for creating this color wheel. You'll get step-by-step -step instructions and it's free to enroll, no credit card required. Phase two is all about being able to see and use value accurately. So what even is value? Value is the lightness or the darkness of a color. And depending on the materials that you are using, you are going to have a different approach or a different technique for finding your values. Here I'm using a colored pencil and I am making the darkest value possible by adding more layers and more pressure. For those lighter values between the darkest value and white, I am adding less pressure and fewer layers. If I'm working with really opaque colored pencils, I can add white to achieve my lighter values. And this is a strategy that is more common when working with gouache, acrylic paint, and oil paint. Regardless of the materials that you're working with, it's important that when you look at your reference material, whether it be a physical object in front of you or a photograph, that you are able to look and identify the shadow shapes. These are those shapes that hold the darkest value and anchor your image. Being able to see the shadow shapes can take a lot of work. And the best way to practice this is to do two value studies. For this portrait of Tom Hiddleston, I am using the Pentel pocket brush pen. I really like this, I'll link it below if you wanna try it out. What I love about this pen is that it doesn't let me cheat when I'm doing my two value studies. I can't make this pen lighter by easing up on it the same way that I could with colored pencil. And as you can see by this page where I was actually trying to do two value studies, I cheated a ton. Even though I was trying really hard to do only two values, it was so easy for other values to sneak in so that I could delineate an edge. These are all two and three value studies of famous paintings, mostly from Sargent and Vermeer. And you'll see that the two value doesn't have a ton of information, but the three value, you're really able to see that more. If you feel comfortable escalating your two value studies up to three value studies, you totally can. And with gouache, all this means is that you will have a pile of black paint and then you will mix up a pile of gray paint as well. At this point, I can hear you thinking, okay, I clicked on this video because I'm interested in color. Why did you take all the color away from me? Well, that's really intentional. When you have tons of colors available, it's easy to get overwhelmed. And if you're not able to see your values correctly anyway, you're never gonna get the color right. So I really like an approach where you are giving yourself more options as you progress, rather than starting with a ton of options from the beginning. And if you're taking the time to draw your images rather than to trace them, this is going to do double duty because you are going to up your drawing skills as well. I love using graphite for your drawings because it's easily erasable. So you're able to tweak and adjust your drawings and you don't have to get it perfect the first time, which is sometimes what we feel when we're working with colored pencils or watercolor. 
When you work with graphite on gray paper, which is what this is, you can also add your light values. So this is training your eye to say, okay, what is going to be darker than about the middle and what is going to be lighter than the middle and how can I represent that? This is a faster way to lay in your values because all of those light midtones don't need to be shaded in with graphite. A value sketch could be something really quick, maybe an hour or two, or you could spend a lot of time like I did for this portrait on the right, maybe six, seven, eight hours. And it's totally up to you how long you spend. This page is a page from my 100 portraits challenge. And each of these studies were more like 30 to 40 minutes. You can draw portraits, you can draw still life, landscapes, pets, anything that you want. But the important thing is that you dial in to value. Let's talk about your assignments. Your assignment for phase two is to complete an ambitious number of two value studies and full value studies. When you do this, choose any materials that you wish, keeping in mind your personal goals as an artist and your particular interests. When you're selecting your number, take what you feel is easily doable and double it. I would recommend at least 15 two value studies and at least five full value studies. And when you are doing these assignments, keep in mind that your progress is not going to be linear, meaning that you finish your value and you never come back to this phase. This is a cyclical process. And every time you come back and practice your value exercises, you are enhancing your ability to see and understand color. Phase three is to introduce limited color palettes. This means using two to five pre-selected colors that were intentionally selected for your piece. This spread is part of my 100 heads challenge and I did it with yellow ochre, red, and black. This is a very traditional palette and a lot of oil painters are trained with these three colors to begin with, with the addition of white. And I'm gonna show you this palette in action as I draw Tom Hiddleston again. Even though I have a few more colors available to me now, I still start with the shadow shapes because this is how I organize the drawing and the distribution of value in my mind. Very quickly, I'm able to see the image start coming to life. And I started with red because that's a little bit more of a forgiving color. And a lot of the shadows over on the right side of the face are going to be warmer than the shadows in the hair, which is why I'm using the black in the hair to begin with. I am still going to see elements of both black and red in the shadow shapes because I need to use the black to make it darker. This is one of the beauties of the limited palette is that you have so few options, you can't overthink it. There really is only one super dark color in this set, and that is the black. The black is also going to be used to cool colors down. So if you use just a tiny touch of black, you're gonna be able to create some cooler colors. And if you mix this with yellow or white, you'll be able to create a little bit more subtlety in these cooler colors. So when I talk about temperature or the warmness or coolness of a color, what exactly am I talking about? Well, this is how close a color is to orange or to blue on the color wheel, with blue being our very coolest color and with orange being our very warmest color. When you look at this photo reference, you are not going to see any pure orange or any pure blue anywhere on this color wheel. In fact, you really won't see any red or yellow either. All of the colors here are going to be neutralized versions, but what you're doing with a limited color palette is you're training your eye to see past the neutral and to see what colors go together to make that. You can't just go to your 100 set of colored pencils or into the art supply store and pick out the exact supply that matches exactly what you're doing. Rather, you are dissecting and reverse engineering the color that you see in your reference and creating it with a limited set of materials. This Zorn palette is obviously totally doable with colored pencils, even though it's more of a traditional oil painting limited palette. 
when you work with colored pencils, I recommend that you warm up with some really light layers first so that you know that you can lay down a really thin layer of black when you need to. You could also work with just some color swatches or some color mixing charts first. And this is a big part about learning color theory, playing around with color mixtures, maybe even before you jump into a finished drawing. I unpack all of this in my course, and I also address a ton of other options that you can use when you're working with limited color palettes. This pair was done using the Zorn palette that I just showed you. And this one was done with only three colored pencils, no white, just the white of the paper. This final pair was done with five colored pencils. And you can see here that there is so much variety that you can achieve with your limited color palettes. Each of these limited color palette studies took between two to three hours. And doing several different limited palette studies with the same photo reference can be a great way for you to start experimenting with what colors and what color schemes you respond to the most. Here are a few other examples to get your juices flowing. And all of these were done using just three colored pencils. Have you been enjoying this video so far? If so, I'd love it if you hit the like button. It's a great way to support the channel. Your assignment for phase three is to start playfully exploring limited color palettes. Start by just seeing how many different colors you can mix up using your two to five pre-selected colors, and then translate this into a more formalized finished drawing sketch or painting. I recommend at least five to 10 limited palette studies before moving on to phase four. And when you do these limited palette studies, try several different kinds of limited palettes and really start paying attention to what you like without letting go of everything that you've already learned. Remember, value and shadow shapes are still super important. Phase four is to start intentionally expanding your color palette. And to do this, we're returning back to the beginning, back to our color wheel. Use the color wheel to start understanding color schemes, color psychology, and how you want to put your color relationships together. For this piece, I pre-selected the colored pencils that I would use while I was looking at my photo reference. And I selected colors that fell into a complementary color scheme that was based on orange and blue. Now, when you look at this photo, you might not see bright blue or bright orange. I don't either, but I see a lot of blue and orange undertones that I want to accentuate throughout the piece. Here in the hair, I am using cool grays, which are close to blue on the color wheel. These blues are going to be the undertone of the hair. And then I'm coming in and adding dark red oranges. These really look like browns, but they have that warm undertone base. And these are going to hold the shadow shapes on the face together. So I have this warm, cool relationship. You don't have to understand all of this to get started on phase four, but the important thing is that you enter into choosing colors intentionally and that you're curious and creative in your application. In those transitionary areas between the shadow shapes and the lighter part of the face, we call these half tones. I am using a much brighter orange, and this is probably the brightest orange in the entire piece. This is where I'm focusing the intensity, and I want the intensity to have a small amount of speaking space. So by that, I mean the highest intensity colors take up the smallest amount of space on the page. I'm then using colors that have an orange undertone to transition the colors away from that brightest color, but these orange undertone colors are much more subtle and subdued. This orange blue relationship is a format or a template, but it doesn't have to be a hardcore rule. Here I noticed a little bit more pink intensity. Pink is actually a cooler color when it comes to your warm colors. And so I grabbed for a bright fuchsia. That's not part of the orange blue color scheme, but I'm experimenting with it and seeing how it looks in this color story. I'm always paying attention to value relationships in this piece, but towards the end, I am really making sure that the darkest values get dark enough and the lightest values stay light enough. And when I came through the hair and made it darker, I subdued that blue a little bit. I neutralized it by adding a warmer brown over the top. The blue is still there. It's still communicating blue and it's tied in with the eyes and the shadow on the right side of the face where that reflected light pops in. But 
but it's not hitting you over the head with it. And that makes for a more sophisticated color scheme. Yes, I could go in and go bright orange and bright blue, and that might work for an abstract piece or a landscape, but it's probably not going to be super effective for a realistic portrait, at least not the style that I was using today. So instead I focused on subtle colors that spoke to that color scheme rather than being too literal. Here are some really literal color schemes that I did with watercolor. For each of these, my base color was orange, but I built up four different color schemes using orange as a base. And you can see how the mood, emotion, and composition completely changes based on the other colors that I chose to support orange. Here's one more example of expanding your color palette. Here I did a yellow background with my colored pencils, and then I laid in shadow shapes with one color. Once I got those shadow shapes laid in in this red burgundy color, I came through and added color to the hair, and I'm choosing green here. Red and green are actually a complementary color scheme, but this wasn't something that I held to throughout the entire piece. Just an initial decision to help the hair stand apart from the skin tone. As I played around with color, I was looking at the photo reference, but I wasn't holding on to it really tightly. Rather, I was using it as inspiration and then being playful and experimental with my colors. I didn't allow myself to use every single color imaginable. So when I saw an area that was warm, I usually stuck to yellow and oranges that I had pre-selected. And I brought these into the shadows as well so that they felt cohesive. It didn't feel like the shadows were completely completely separate from the rest of the face. And I was really happy how this one turned out, even though it didn't follow any kind of specific color scheme. It was just a playful approach to working with color. Your assignment for phase four is to start working with expanded color palettes. This doesn't necessarily mean using every single pencil in a 100 pencil set or purchasing every single watercolor off the wall at this art supply store. No, no, no. This is more about selecting a few colors really intentionally for a specific purpose. Try at least five to 10 color studies using what you've learned from this phase. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned a ton about what it takes to master color and that you've started putting together your own unique plan. If you've made it this far, I can tell that you are really serious about mastering color. So don't lose your momentum. Go head over to the color lab and watch that free lesson and make your own color wheel today. If you decide that you would like some more support on phase two through phase four, four of this journey, then the Color Lab is a great resource for you. There you will find lessons on creating value studies, value drawings, what colors to use in your limited color palettes, and how to mix colors. Then I'll teach you how to put all of this together to create artwork with your own unique artistic vision and voice. I'll see you over there or in the next YouTube video. Bye.